they adopt this way of life and they're moving forward and they're actually noticing a dip in perhaps strength, their results, maybe their, their numbers are coming down. What would you say that they need to be doing going forward to try and get to, you know, optimal strength again or to even, you know, surpass where they were before? Sure. So I've usually got like a hierarchy of troubleshooting uh, in that things I fit, find to be the most probable causes of that issue. Um, the first one is adaptation period. I adapted very quickly within a week, I was back up to my normal lifts. You know, that's just me. That's not a general experience. It's not what most people experience. So I'm a bit unique in that sense. Um, so transitioning period is one. It might take a few a few months longer or weeks longer. Um, second one seems to be eating enough fat. People tend to eat too lean, um, especially men. They can eat a lot of protein. Um, so, you know, they'll be having chicken breasts and think, oh, that's the carnivore diet. And yeah, strictly speaking, it's true, but you're just not eating enough fat. So you come from a diet where you're, say your given macros were 200 protein, 200 carbs, 100 fat per day. Then you go from 200 protein, zero carbs. You're still at 100 grams of fat. You've knocked out 200 grams of carbs. There, so you knocked out a massive proportion of your energy intake. So I'm a big fan of tracking things initially because then you know where you're at. So you try to find that balance in terms of the mass of food that you're taking in. Um, other issues include overtraining. Um, so, you know, it's easy to watch a video of Sean Baker doing his hardcore workouts and stuff and it's very impressive and people think, oh, you know, within a week of doing carnival diet, I'm going to be like that and I break all the word records. Um, that's just not the case. He's adapted over time. So you've got to change the enzymatic system, the, the, the bodily functions, your biology over a period of time. So you might find you can't deal with that much fat at once. So maybe just reduce the carbs a little bit increase the fat a little bit, reduce the carbs, increase the fat, you know, that's the thing, just just titrate it up and eventually get to the point where you're using the energy so it's effective to be used for your workouts. Troubleshooting outside of that could be a number of different things. Um, it could be overtraining. Um, generally speaking, I wouldn't go above about four sessions per week of an hour in the gym. And that's if you're doing proper resistance training, so you're actually training, you're not chatting your mates for two hours. Um, other things as well is just not eating the right amount of food getting too paranoid about trying to hit the perfect macro ratio there isn't a perfect macro ratio your body has a set requirement of protein and fat and whatever ratio the land is whatever ratio it lands you i've used as much as 80 percent fat by caloric value and as much as about 40 percent fat um so very very low fat diet um that gets you shredded basically but you don't attempt that unless you're in a position where you can do that. So you don't start the carnivore diet, try to get shredded immediately. You do that a bit further down the lane when you're fat adapted and your body's used to using your body fat for energy. Yeah, I like that approach, actually. That's smart. Um, it's actually in line with what we would have done in nature as well. If you don't, if you can't get enough fat, you have to consume the carbohydrates. You have to make up for that. It's a cons compensatory kind of strategy to replace the energy source, really, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, what I was going to ask you is how, because you're saying you're right now, you're in the process of eliminating fat. You're, you're on a bit of a cut. How do you fine tune body composition? How do you play around with those numbers, the, the fats and the proteins? Say, for example, take us through, you know, your, your off season type of thing. You, you want to build up, you want to bulk up. And then when you, you start to turn that corner and you want to fine tune, you want to bring that fat down. What, what's going on there with the, the process? Basically, my main thought is, what can I do in terms of an intervention to change my body composition significantly whilst reducing the amount of stress it has in my life? In that I see a lot of people reduce fat by half, then they feel like crap. No wonder why you've you've halved your energy intake effectively. Um, so, you know, that's one obvious pitfall I notice people do. Um, the main thing is just getting your protein right at the start. And what I'd say is by the end of your, you know, gaining period, bulking period, whatever you want to call it, massing period, you want your intake to be as high as possible. Um, you don't want to be starting when you're just about maintaining weight. You want to be starting when your you know, food intake is really, really high. So any cuts you do make in your your fat, perhaps, is less less significant, less impactful towards your sleep recovery day of life. Um, and generally speaking, I'd say a comfortable rate of fat loss is about, uh, about 0.5 to 1% per week for total body weight. So a 200-pound person can lose up to about 2 pounds per weight quite feasibly, providing they're not already shredded. And they'll be fine with that. And it'll get to a point where they get very lean, in which case they'll have to make more steep cuts in their, their um, fat intake. I tend to keep protein about the same. 
If not, if someone gets particularly hungry, I'll actually leverage it slightly. So they might start at, for example, 200 protein, 200 fat. Maybe they go up to 210, 10 grams of protein by the end of, say, three weeks. They might be down to 160 fat. You know, that's going to be a better way to go about it because you're going to get the satiety from the protein. Um, you know, all the extra nutrition that they might be losing because they've, they're in a stressed out state. You know, losing body fat is quite stressful for the most part. So they're getting more vitamins and minerals for the protein that are taking in. And that will almost compensate for the fat that they've got in their diet. Um, in, in that you'll still have some nourishment, but you're taking away the energy substrate and let your body use its own body fat for fuel. But it seems to be titrating it is the best way to go about it. And the biggest leverage I use, um, unless someone's eating carbohydrates, is to just reduce the fat very slowly and find the right amount of activity based on their you know age, stage, and gender, that sort of thing. And usually I find that people just need to sort themselves out first. So nine times out of 10 when I work with someone, I tend to get into a baseline diet for about two to three weeks where they're maintaining their weight. Then I will work out, okay, they feel good here. Okay, now I need to reduce the fat a bit. And that's effectively what I do. And it gives me re reproducible results every time. And it's very effective. Nice, nice. Um, what's your diet look like at the moment compared to, say, when you were you were bulking? What, what's, what, like, give us an, um, an example of both. Sure, yeah. So um, I'll give you a, a macro guideline because that's what people kind of want to know. Um, so macro guideline off-season would be something like 300 protein, 50 carb, 300 fat. Have a lot of dairy. Dairy seems to leverage weight gain, which is quite obvious, you know, the insulin stuff, the carbohydrate insulin model. Now, when I'm cutting back on fat, I'm a bit more cognizant of the carbohydrate intake. So that might mean reducing my Greek yogurt, my raw milk, that sort of thing. Maybe I won't, won't use as much burgers from the shop with little sneaky ingredients, you know, things like that. So less rusk, maybe less wheat flour, if there's any in that. Um, then I'd say I'd produce down to probably about, I'm actually about 150 fat right now, which is about half what I was on before, but I'm doing a steep cut just to get rid of a lot of fat. I'm going to go on a diet break in, in a few weeks for about two weeks, which is just eating back back at maintenance level. Um, then I cut again. So I don't believe people should cut for 20 weeks straight I, i'm more of a fan of splitting up in the middle somewhere and it's what we call a diet break um it seems to be according to studies the most effective way to go about it and that's regardless if you're lean or over fat um it's good for the brain gets your metabolic rate back up to par so you're not reducing 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 and yeah i mean right now the day of eating for me looks something like i want to say it's hard to think now about 1.3 kilos of meat, just lean meat. Um, I'm doing about four to 500 milliliters of raw milk. I'm doing about 100 milliliters of single cream, about 80 grams of whey protein, and that's it for the most part. Then add in every now and then I add in mackerel, salmon, fish. Um, the meat can be beef or chicken. It tends to be mostly beef, about 70% of it. But I find that when I'm cutting back i tend to eat less quantities of food but i just pick the ones that i know are going to hit that satiety factor so for me that's going to be the meat obviously uh, you have to chew it. it gives you that mastication sense that feeling oh, i'm eating something as if i'm slamming down protein shakes you know in the off season um it goes down a bit easier it goes around a bit quicker so you can eat more food effectively and it's sweeter high palatable so it just comes down to eating the more boring foods i find which is just inevitable but i quite enjoy it and the moment you do eat anything sweet, so if I have a coffee with a bit of you know sugar-free sweeter in it, which is going to kill me apparently, um, then you know, go at it. I quite enjoy that, and that one coffee is my fix for the day, sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah. build muscle and lose fat on the carnivore diet.